Hello everyone, welcome to Siddhi Academics. I'm Amrita. I firmly believe that you should keep trying until you get it right. So let's start our trial for today. Let's do some more questions from previous year for grade 10 CBSC so that we become more rehearsed, more confident to face the exam. But if you're wa watching my videos and learning from them, then please like, share and subscribe to my channel Siddhi Academics. Let's start. Let's start this question which belongs to uh, area and sector formula. The outer hand of a clock is 6 cm long. Find the area swept by it between 7.20 am and 7.55 am. Let's draw a rough, rough clock. Suppose this is the clock and this will be 12. 1, 2, 3. This is a rough uh, diagram of a clock. 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. 10 and 11. Now, uh, suppose the hour hand is at, uh, it will be somewhere between uh, little, not exactly between little less than that. When it is 720, so hour hand will be somewhere here, let's say, and minute hand will be pointing to 4 because it would be 720. Now, after uh, how many minutes have passed between 20 and 55? Uh, 35 minutes have passed. So, after 35 minutes, the hour hand will be pointing some close to 8 because it's almost going to be 8. After 5 minutes, it will be exactly 8. So, at that time, the minute hand will be pointing here to uh, up, um, 11 to make it 7.55, right? So, I, we need to understand how much angle the hour hand makes from its initial position at 7.20 to final position at 7.55. Now we know uh, that for one full rotation of the hour hand, it takes 12 hours. Suppose this is 12, it starts at 12, hour hand starts at 12. Then it will complete a full rotation uh, uh, that is 360 degrees. To complete that, it will take 12 hours. So, 12 hours will be equal to six, 360 degrees. Uh, I will just erase this. This will be equal to 360 degrees. Now, in one minute, because we are dealing with minutes, we need to understand in 35 minutes, how much has the hour hand moved. So, for one minute, how much time it will take? That will be 360 divided by 12, but 12 is in hours. So, I will convert it into minutes. So, to convert into minutes, I have to multiply 60 here, 12 into 60. Now, for one minute, it will take, well, uh, this is direct, I mean, I can see um, factors, common factors are there. 60 into 6 is 360 and 6 ones are 6, 6 twos are 12. So, for one minute, it moves only half a degree because our hand moves very slowly. So, it is uh, correct that half a degree only it will move for one minute because to complete one full rotation, it takes 12 hours. So, that is all right. Now, for 35 minutes, where did the 30, 35 come from? Because we subtracted 755 from 720. This is the final position and this is the initial position. So, between that, it will take 35 minutes. So, for 35 minutes, let us understand how much angle this angle. I am talking about this angle. Let this angle be theta. So, what is the value of theta we are trying to understand? Half into 35. So, it will be. 35 by 2 degrees, right? This much distance, it will, uh, it would have swept between 7.20 am and 7.55 am. Now, for the area, area, we have to simply use area of a sector formula. What is the, what is the area the, uh, formula? Three, theta by 360 degrees into pi r square, right? Now, uh, theta value is here, we know 35 by 2 into 360 degree. 360 degree is this, this 360 degree I am writing here. And pi value will be 22 by 7. I will write this 7 here, multiply it here. And r, what is the radius? It's given the hour hand is 6 centimeter long. So, it will be 6 into 6. Now, 6 into 6 is 36. So, I will directly cut this 36 and 10 will be here. Now, uh, here 2 11s are uh, 22 and 2 1s are 2. This, this got uh, cut. Now, 7 1s are 7, 7 5s are 35. So, what remains is 
5 ones are 5, 5 twos are 10. So, what remains is 11 by 2 centimeter square. Why centimeter square? Because radius uh, or the hour hand of a clock is in expressed in centimeter. So, this also will be centimeter square. So, it will be 11 by 2, if we convert it decimal, it will be 5.5 .5 centimeter square. This much area, the hour hand swe sweeps between 7.20 am and 7.55 am. So, uh, just first find out, step 1 is to find out the angle that it swept between the initial time and the final time that is given to us. This we can easily find out like this, upper hour hand. Then, find the area, use the area of a sector formula. Th th uh, theta by 360 into pi r square. We have found theta value that is th 35 by 2. Now, simply substitute the value, put the radius that is given 6 centimeter and find out the area. So, this is a very simple question. We should not make any mistakes while calculation. Let us start this question from probability. If 3 coins are tossed simultaneously, what is the probability of getting at most 1 tail? Now, what are the most important terms here? Three coins are tossed simultaneously, and they are and the, the probability of what we need to find out getting at most one tail means I can get no tail also. That is also a favorable outcome, and uh, at least at most one tail, not more than that. If two tails are coming, then it is not uh, this. This I will not count into uh, or three tails are coming. This I will not count into my favorable outcomes. At most one tail means no tail or the all the fair, uh, outcomes, total our number of outcomes, how they will, I will erase these lines, how these, um, how the coins might pan out after being tossed. So, first is I will get a head in the first coin, head in the second and tail in the last. Uh, second outcome could be head, tail, head. Third outcome could be tail, head, head. And last and uh, another outcome could, could be head, head and head. So, these are the outcomes. One more uh, variety could be like uh, tail, tail. I get two tails along with them one head or tail head tail then I can get here head first coin will show me head the next two coins will show me tail tail and last outcome could be tail 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 these are the total number of outcomes right total number of outcomes this is my entire set of total number of outcomes so total number of outcomes will be equal to 8. Now, favorable outcomes, number of favorable outcomes, let us understand what that set will have. Obviously, it will not have all the 8, 8, I uh, will just erase this here and write it, rewrite it again. Obviously, it will not have all the, um, I mean, uh, everything from this set, it will have Head, 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 head. Why? Because at most one tail. So, no tail also is one of, one out of the number of favorable outcomes, right? It will come, come in the favorable outcome category. So, head, head, head. And that could be head, head, tail, right? At most one. Then it could be H, T, H also, tail in the middle. Or it could be tail in the beginning, tail, head, head. So, these are the four favorable outcomes. 1, 2, 3 and 4. This set has 4. So, 4 favorable outcomes are there. So, probability of getting at most one tail. That will be 4 by 8, right? Number of favorable outcomes. divided by total number of outcomes. So, it will be 4 by 8 which is actually half. So, there are half chances of getting 
at most means 50 percent chances of getting at most one tin probabilities like that for when three coins are to tossed simultaneously so let's move to the next question the next question is from trigonometry the angle of elevation of the top of a tower from a point on the ground which is 30 meter away from the foot of the tower is 30 degree so if this is the tower okay and uh, the angle of elevation from a point on the ground where is the point point is 30 meter away so this distance is 30 meters and the angle of elevation that's given to us is 30 degrees so this is 30 degrees Find the height of the tower. Very easy. Just we need to use tan 30. Tan 30 degrees is equal to let this height be h, height of the tower be h, then h by 30. So, what is the value of the which is again h by 30 here? So, simply we will now take h to the other side, it will go to the numerator 30 by root 3. Now, what is this actually? Root 3 into root 3 is equal to 3, right? So, root 3 in the denominator, cancel it out. What is left in the numerator is 10 root 3 meters. So, the height of the tower will be nothing but equal to 10 root 3 meters. If the value of root 3 is given in such a question, then you have to substitute here and find the value. Otherwise, you can leave it like this, not a problem. Okay. So, this is a very simple question and uh, solution is also coming up very easily. But this is a very repeated question. So, mind it. Please go through uh, all the trigonometric identities and the values to not make any mistakes.